Hello and welcome to Quick Defensions! We're going to be doing something a little different today where I'm going to do kind of like a workshop video to try and help those out there with PC issues or just to try to give general tips in general uh, <laughs> general tips in general Ah, uh, geez, visit the redundancy department of redundancy lately So if you have an HTP computer whose operating system runs on a mechanical hard drive and you want to put a solid state drive in there and have the operating system on that solid state drive to improve that computer's performance, this video is going to be helpful for you. If you don't have an HP, it might still be a little helpful, but not as much. So very first thing, HP has got what's called a media recovery drive. Pretty much every HP computer has one of these things, unless you did something special to remove it and it doesn't have it anymore. So it has a partition on its hard drive, probably about 25 to 30 gigs, that just has recovery media on it. And so that's uh, if something happens to your hard drive or you just want to reset your PC to factory settings, you'd utilize that recovery partition on that hard drive. In the case that of what we're doing here, we're going to be taking an SSD and installing it in tandem with it. So it's going to have the original hard drive in it, but the operating system is going to be on an entirely different storage drive. We're not able to use the recovery partition on the stock hard drive. We're going to have to create a separate media recovery tool using a USB storage device. With Windows 10, you're going to want a 16 gig or more. If you really can only find one that's more than 16 gigs, it will work just as well. Uh, I guess we better just double check, make sure there's nothing on it. Nothing here. Okay. What we're doing here, we're taking our jump drive, we're going to turn it into a media recovery tool. So this is something you could boot off of and uh, install an OS from the jump drive onto the whatever hard drive or SSD you want. Alright, you go to start, and you can just scroll through the thing, I think, right, help and support. Recovery Manager, there we go. So HP Recovery Media Creation is your golden ticket. <coughs> You're only allowed to create one set of recovery media, so you gotta just be aware of that. That means you don't want to lose this jump drive. It may not let you make another one. Continue. I don't know why that's the case. Like, why not? Why can't you? No optical drive found. Oh, whoops. I removed the optical drive last night. I stuck it back in. It's installed in the chassis, but I never plugged it in. That's okay. So you you could do uh, optical drive. You could put a burn it onto DVDs. I'd probably use like four of them, or you know, you use the flash drive. Minimum 11 gigabyte capacity required. This might vary depending on what OS you're exactly running. How big is this thing? Store and go, 14.4 gigs. All right, so it's probably a 16 gig one. We'll do that. Continue. The selected USB flash drive will be formatted all day, and the USB flash drive will be lost. So yeah, if you got something on there, obviously you can't use it. You don't think you can use it for anything else after you do this anyway, unless you format it again and then use it as a regular jump drive after that. But if you do that, you lose your recovery tool and you may not be able to create an error one like we just saw in the step before. Yeah, see it says right here, extra space on the flash drive will be unusable after recovery media is created. Obviously you, you click OK after you're sure this uh, the jump drive is big enough and you got everything off of it that you want if there's anything on it to begin with. So it's going to sit here and do its time, or yeah, it's going to just do its thing here, it's going to prepare it, and it's going to copy some stuff over. This could take a while. Uh, and yeah, we'll get back to you after it's done with that. The recovery media is specific to the exact HP computer that you make it for. The recovery media that we use for this computer is going to be specific to this computer. It doesn't make sense to try and use it on a different computer. I've tried. It does say that in some way that this recovery media is not meant for this computer. Basically it's you're creating one copy of it that's meant to go to one computer so it makes sense just to keep it with that computer at all times. So that's what I'm saying. Put some velcro on it and on some velcro on the inside of the inside wall of the computer somewhere where it's not going to be in the way and stick it so the port side's down. That way you know if you ever collect dust inside the computer it doesn't get all gunked up inside of here. That sounds a bit OCD and it probably is. You probably don't have to but it's something I would do personally. There you go. Recovery flash drive has been created successfully. Please label it and save it in a safe place.
So yeah, first thing you'd want to do is do that before you modify your computer. It's probably safe to do it beforehand before you even, you know, get inside the computer. In case something else happens down the road, you've already got this to take care of you. So, you eject it. Eject, store and go. Pull it out. And uh, we'll give this thing a good shutdown. After it's shut down, you want to go ahead and remove all cables. Especially that power cable. So it's probably a good idea to hit that power button. That will discharge any power that's still in there. I guess I ought to plug the optical drive back in while I'm in here. So I'm lucky enough that this computer's got a spot just for a second, like a second hard drive. So we'll stick that in. So you're going to want four M3 screws. M3 is like the size and thread of the screw. They got this power cable zip tied to these other cables. I'm going to have to snip the zip tie carefully. Yeah, it's kind of a tight fit. You're also going to want a SATA cable. And there's the white connector right next to it and below that it says SATA1. So we're going to take our extra SATA cable. Now you're probably going to think that the next step is to take this end of the cable and plug it into the SSD when in fact, um, no. The SATA0 is the goes to here and some BIOSes built into the motherboard like to just pick SATA 0 and boot off of that one first. You can change the this in the uh, settings before the operating system loads but I'm also going to do this as well. So we're going to move this cable, unplug it from there and we're going to plug it into the SSD and then SATA 1 can plug into there. So basically, if this in a way is physically changing priorities. It's going to change the priority for the mechanical hard drive from first priority to second. This might not even really matter, especially if you're going to wipe the hard drive, uh, the mechanical drive after you do this. I don't plan on doing it, so that's why I'm doing this. Just uh, another step to make sure that it doesn't try to just automatically boot off of the wrong operating system. So in effect, the operating system's still going to be there on this mechanical drive, but there will also be another one on the SSD, and we're going to—it'll be booting off of that instead. All right, plug that in, ground it out. The reason why I did that instead of just uh, unplugging and switching the cables over there on this end was just because it's hard to get my fingers down in between the CPU cooling fins and the GPU. Now we're going to unplug the stock hard drive, both power and. SATA. Plug that back in. Plug in the recovery media and we'll now give it a go. We're going to turn on the computer. We're going to want to have it boot off of the jump drive first. Press the skip for startup menu. you got to pay attention to what it says, what button to press when it boots up. This is going to look different depending on your HP computer. I know they've made several renditions of all this and whatnot. So we're going to do use a device. Uh, use a USB drive network connection or Windows Recovery DVD. The Eufy Vertibin Store and Go 5.0. That sounds like what we want because I remember our jump drive was named Store and Go. Floppy CD. Why does it say floppy? This thing was built like 15 years after floppies became obsolete. Why is this saying floppy? We haven't had floppy drives in computers for like, I want to say decades, but it's been, it's been over a decade. Over a decade. Okay, enough ranting. We're going to go to this. Alright, I'm guessing it's booting off the jump drive that we just created. If you use a USB 3.0 jump drive with a USB 3.0 port, this will probably go a little faster. Prepare to spend some time on it, no matter what way you go. Alright, so we're going to do a factory reset. Yes, we're going to do that. All hard drive changes will be lost. Um, since we unplugged the stock hard drive, it's not uh, electrically connected to the computer, so it has to be talking about the SSD. Alright, okay. Next. Alright, so now it's going to do this for a while. Okay, recovery preparation is complete. After the computer has restarted, the recovery installation phase will begin. Okay, so yeah, I guess it just like unpackaged it or whatever. So now it's ready to go and um, it's going to take a little bit longer now. I think, because we're not done quite yet. We click continue, the computer shuts off and restarts. I think, yep, yep, restarts. And right now we just let it do its thing. So it's going to be doing something like this for quite a while. And it's going to probably restart itself several times. After many, many, many restarts, and a few, there's even one time where it looked like you're at the desktop and you can even move the mouse around and stuff. 
and then it shuts down. Uh, if you finally get to this window. So after your computer restarts and you finish the initial setup of your computer, you must perform some additional important steps, such as update security files from Microsoft and HP, reinstall software that did not come with the computer, and restore any personal data you may have backed up if applicable. Click finish. I think it will just shut down. Or maybe it will restart. I don't know. All right, now it's acting like you turned it on for the first time. So now you just want to go through, set it up for the first time. Finally, we're at our desktop and it's ready to go. Almost. We're going to shut it down. All right, unplug the device. Discharge the power by holding the power button. Now we're going to plug in the hard drive, the stock hard drive that we unplugged before we started doing the factory reset. Unplug the jump drive. Like I said, I put the jump drive inside the tower and it, like I said, it'd be a good idea to secure it like with Velcro. So it just stays put. And reconnect your power supply and you're done. Now there's an operating system on both storage devices. So what's to keep it from just immediately going and booting off the old one? And we can tell this by simply turning it on. The dead giveaway is going to be when you look at, um, you go to your file browser, go to this PC. You're going to see the Windows C drive. The C drive for this one's going to be the SSD. I know this because you can look at how much free space there is. There's a, or its capacity, 452 gigabytes. I know the other hard drive is a terabyte, so it's going to be more. And I can also look at, okay, here, here's Windows F. Here's a 918 gigabytes, so that's the terabyte hard drive. It's also labeled Windows because there's an operating system on that that named that hard drive Windows. So we know that just by turning it on and letting it boot and do its thing, it's just naturally booting off the storage device that we want, the SSD. So I didn't erase anything from the previous drive. So if there was any files I wanted, I didn't actually have to transfer them off that hard drive and put them back on. They're here. So to recap, uh, what we just done was uh, we, we took an HP computer uh, that did not have an SSD, added an SSD to it, and then installed the operating system to the SSD using HP's recovery media by making a recovery media jump drive and then use that to install it onto the SSD. And in the process we were able to keep the operating system on the stock mechanical drive and keep all the files there. We didn't have to reformat that drive or anything and everything's still accessible except now we have the same operating system basically we will have to reinstall any programs that uh, didn't come with the factory settings now you can enjoy the you know the additional storage of the stock hard drive that you had plus any storage that the SSD gives you but any you know you can also have your computer start up faster uh, programs and applications start up and uh, a little faster as well as uh, like if you're playing a game your load times are going to be shorter because it will be able to load it faster but there's any other tips or questions you might have regarding computers or certain programs um, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments with that being said um, yeah feel free to like the video if you liked it if you found it helpful comment if there's any other you know if there's a question or another tip you'd like me to do a video on feel free to comment on that and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.